hi everyone and welcome back to sonia's prep i haven't done one of these videos of shabam meal preps in such a long time and i thought what better time to do it than right after pesach when we're like stuffed to the brim with food that we've had this past week and we're all gonna need some new ideas so i figured let me just do another video and i hope you get some inspiration from it and i'm gonna just take you along and show you the meals that i plan to make the salads dessert hope you guys enjoy now let's get into the video First off, I'll be sharing with you how I make my sirkanis. It's a chickpea and rice dish. To start off, I place in two cups of very well washed and rinsed rice and one can of chickpeas. I peel one onion and two medium sized carrots and dice them up. I use about one cup of chopped meat over here. I have beef, but you could use chicken or beef or turkey, anything that your heart desires. I actually pre-chop all of my meat when I get them from the butcher. It's actually very convenient. So when I have the chance, I definitely do do that. So here I'm just chopping up my vegetables to go into the dish. I cut the carrots quite small into tiny cubes so that they're almost the same size, even smaller than the chickpeas. Once the vegetables have all been chopped up, I add everything into the bowl, add in a half a cup of oil, half a cup of water, and then I season everything with some salt i use about two teaspoons to one tablespoon depending on how you like things to be salted i do the same thing with the chicken consomme seasoning you could use up to a tablespoon or just two teaspoons if you prefer to be less salty i also use some black pepper cumin and coriander I mix everything really well and cover it with some foil. I bake it in a 400 degree preheated oven for an hour and a half, mixing it one time after 45 minutes. Now on to the meatballs with potatoes. I have some ground beef here. I'm gonna be using an onion and a quarter of a zucchini. I'm gonna food process all of that. And you have two options here. You could leave them food processed just as they are stringy or you could put the s blade inside of the bowl and puree them even finer the zucchinis and onions provide a lot of moisture to the meatballs and by pureeing them the kids won't even know it so it's a good way of sneaking in vegetables and not to mention that it's going to make them nice and fluffy A secret ingredient that I have just been taught is that by adding in half a cup of water into your meat mixture, it's going to add even more moisture to them and make them much more softer. For the seasoning, I add in half a tablespoon of salt, half a tablespoon of chicken powder, 
some coriander. You could just throw in a dash, a dash of garlic powder, some paprika, some black pepper, cumin, and cinnamon. I personally don't like the taste of cinnamon anywhere else, but for some reason it pairs so nicely with beef. So I tried this in someone else's house and I really, really like that flavor that how it just brings out a nice flavor to the meat. So I've been doing it ever since. So into a flat skillet, I add in about a quarter cup of oil and I season the oil with some paprika, salt, and pepper. Here I have about four potatoes that are Idaho. I peel them and I cut them into fairly large circles and I place them onto the flat skillet. Once that's all done, I place it on a fire and start to brown the bottom. Once the potatoes have browned really nicely on one side, I flip them over so that they can brown on the other side. This gives the potatoes a really nice color and texture. Now that the potatoes have browned, we can remove that extra oil and I do this just by placing in a paper towel just to absorb any of the extra oil that I may not want. You can leave it oily if you would prefer or you could remove it, it's up to you. When I make my homemade tomato sauce, I use these plum tomatoes that are whole that they sell in a can and I plop them all into the food processor with a bunch of garlic and I food process the entire thing. There's just something about making it this way that I really love. I love the color of it. It just looks like you just spent hours making it and it's the taste is incredible. I prefer that a lot more to the actual tomato sauce that comes in a can or even in a glass jar. And I add in just a little bit of water um, into the food process just to clear everything out and once everything comes to a simmer I start making little balls of meatballs and I place them inside I season everything with some garlic powder and cilantro. I love adding greens to my dishes because I feel like they add a pop of beautiful color. While that's cooking, I'm going to be covering the lid and moving on to our osvo. Osvo is a overnight stew that we make so that we can eat it on Saturday for lunch because we're not able to turn on the fire or use anything electronic. So we make this ahead of time on Friday before Shabbat so that we can enjoy it later on. So into a food processor, I add in one tomato, one onion, and one green apple. And I process the entire thing and place it into a bowl with two cups of washed rice. I add in some tomato sauce. I use one small can. And whenever I have leftovers, I just place them into a Ziploc bag and I freeze it. And whenever I need it, I just take it out and I place it into any dish that I need. I also added in some beef bones, but you could use lamb bones or veal bones. And then add in a quarter cup of oil and five cups of water and all of the vegetables and fruits that I just processed. I enjoy my osvo on the tangy side and I didn't have a green apple to be able to do that so I have a lemon here that I'm going to be squeezing to season everything I add in about a tablespoon of the chicken consomme and a tablespoon of salt if you prefer your uh, food a little bit less salty then just decrease the amount of salt and chicken consomme that you use I place everything onto a stovetop turn it on and let everything come to a boil once that's done, I place it on the lowest possible flame, cover the lid, and let it cook for hours. 
now i'm checking up on my meatballs i'm just stirring things up just a little bit and making sure that all the meatballs are covered in that delicious sauce The night before i did make some chicken soup but i did not record it if you'd like to see a video recipe of how i make my usual chicken soup you can just type into youtube sonia's prep chicken soup and it should come up now on to desserts i wanted something very quick and very easy i had these puff pastry sheets that i thawed out i rolled it out into um very thin layer and i baked it in the oven at 400 degrees for about 30 minutes until it puffs up and becomes beautifully gorgeous and flaky I was getting so tired of our usual fish and wanted to create something new and different and guys oh wow it was so delicious i used a handful of cherry tomatoes jalapenos some lemons and a yellow pepper with about a few tablespoons of oil some uh, cilantro garlic powder salt paprika pepper and some fish seasoning so to start off i washed off the fish placed it into a tin pan added in a few tablespoons of the oil seasoned it very well with fish seasoning and all of the other seasonings that i just showed you After the fish has been seasoned, I add in the vegetables, the tomatoes, the jalapenos and the peppers and some sliced up garlics over the top. To make the fish look just a little bit more prettier, I added in some thinly sliced lemons right over the center on the top. I wanted something briny and lemony and salty and I added in capers to go along with it. I used about 4 tablespoons all together, topped it all off and it was just the perfect touch to this fish. I seasoned everything on the top with cilantro just to make it look a little bit more gorgeous. I covered the fish with some foil and placed it into a preheated oven set at 400 degrees for about 15 minutes. At this point, my meatballs have been cooking for about an hour and I just wanted to show you how perfectly fluffy they are. They're not tough, they're not rough, they are just absolutely delicious and I wanted to share with you how much I enjoyed them. All of the vegetables that we've incorporated into the meat as well as the half a cup of water that we added into it really did fluff up the meatball and it was very very tasty. Now that the sircanis is fully cooked I need to make the garlic oil that goes right over the top of it so I have a fourth of a cup of oil with about seven cloves of minced garlic that I've prepped earlier. I'm just going to be heating all of that until it starts to sizzle when you start smelling that amazing garlic aroma, you just put everything into the sircanis and mix it really well. At this point, the puff pastry has cooked beautifully. It has risen very nicely. I have some cookies and cream filling that I had left over from a previous order that I wanted to use up, but it's 
can totally be customized to your liking you can put in some chocolate spread some jam you could put some uh, cookies and cream filling like i am um, if you want the cookies and cream filling recipe i'll have it linked down below it's very simple just some whipped butter and uh, cream cheese it could be either parv or dairy and i just mixed it all with some confectioner sugar and then i added in some crushed oreos and i whipped it really well and that was it so here I'm just cutting up the puff pastry in half and I'm going to be putting that cookies and cream filling into it on both sides and then closing up the puff pastry. I crush it down just to remove all of those little bits of crumbs over the top. We're going to use the crumbs as decorations later. I place some more cookies and cream over the top layer and then dust it with the crumbs and confectioner sugar. I slice it up into four and it just looks like mini napoleons but they are cookies and cream napoleons they came out really great and was a really nice treat at this point the fish has been cooking for about 15 minutes covered and i want to uncover it and place it back into the oven just to crispen up and have that beautiful golden brownish tinge to it i place it in the oven for about five to seven minutes until they look perfect while the fish is continuing to cook i'm moving on to my next very easy dessert i take the other half of the puff pastry and place some jam over it any kind of jam will do that you prefer and it's just nice and simple the kids love it and it's just a great dessert to have when you're crunched for time Again, press on the top layer to remove any of those bits of crumbs. I remove the crumbs, I reserve it for later. You can also do a very thin layer of the jam over the top. Sprinkle on the rest of those crumbs and then add in some confectioner sugar. That's it. Two very quick and simple desserts have been whipped up and we have something delicious and pretty to eat for Shabbat. Now the fish is ready and it just looks so beautiful, so gorgeous. You can even put some fresh herbs over the top. It's a beautiful presentation, it has tons of juice on it and it reheats really well. I'm so happy with this recipe and I can't wait for you guys to try it as well. Now time to get into our salads. I kept it very simple. I just took any of the vegetables that I had in my fridge, the cucumbers, I have carrots, I have some uh, different small peppers that I have sliced up. Using this special serrated knife, I'll have it linked down below as well for you if you are interested. To dress the salad, I placed in some vinegar, avocado oil, some sugar, about one tablespoon, some black pepper, and salt. For exact measurements, I would say about a quarter cup of vinegar, a few tablespoons of the avocado oil, about two teaspoons of salt, and a sprinkling of pepper. I mix everything well. 
and I also add in some sliced garlic and it's just a perfectly delicious salad. Now I'm going to be moving on to my mayo-less coleslaw that I make. I have some of these shredded cabbage that I place into a bowl. I add in tons of lemon. I also add in about a quarter cup of avocado oil, some slivered almonds, some pumpkin seeds, and craisins. I season the salad with some black pepper and salt and give everything a mix. I'm including a clip of real life cooking. My kids are all up from their nap. They all wanted to have a little snack while I'm cooking. So they're all joining me on the kitchen table while I'm making my tuna salad. For the tuna salad recipe, I use one can of tuna, about one to two sticks of celery that I have chopped up, and two hard boiled eggs that I have cubed up as well. To season it, I have some salt and black pepper and mayonnaise. And of course, my little helpers will be helping me as well. So here are all the yummy treats that we made for this Shabbat. Simple salad, but yet delicious. This is the chicken soup that I just added in some thin little noodles to go with it. It came out really great as well. I really tried to keep this Shabbat meal prep very quick and very simple because we did have a lot going on this past week with Passover. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Leave me a comment down below with any questions or comments that you may have. Leave me a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it and don't forget to subscribe. Shabbat Shalom from my family to yours.